Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. In honor of Vietnam Living History Day on April 6th, all month we're going to be shooting videos relating to the ship's participation in the Vietnam War. Why don't you come up here on top of Turret 2 and join me and I'll show you an interesting feature from that time period. During World War II and the Korean War, there was a 40mm anti-aircraft gun here on the back of Turret 2 and about where I'm kneeling there was a Mark 51 director for that gun. It was removed at the Philadelphia Navy Yard in 1967 and the crew painted this logo, the ship's hull number, on top of the turret. It's so that aircraft flying overhead can recognize who we are. Since we were the only battleship in commission anywhere in the world, I don't know how they would have any question about that. Uh, interestingly, in the 1980s, when there were other battleships in commission, we did not have our hull number painted up here. Uh, the museum decided to re-add it as a tribute to our Vietnam sailors. When you come on our tour, you can see this from the bridge. Another feature added during the Vietnam Commission here in the Philadelphia Navy Yard was this discone cage antenna. The red ring painted around the base tells you that it's a transmitter as opposed to a receiver which would have a blue ring. This was used for ship-to-ship -ship communications and it worked well enough that they added it to the other three Iowas when they were reactivated in the 1980s. Another Vietnam era feature which distinguishes New Jersey from our other three sister ships is on the superstructure behind me. Ten decks up the O10 level you see where it branches out into a T-shape. Only New Jersey received that. She got that in 1968 at, right over across the river in the Philadelphia Navy Yard. That's to house our electronic countermeasures suite. It was added as a defense against Soviet anti-ship missiles as this vessel's anti-aircraft defenses were inadequate by that time and the government didn't want to spend all the money to add modern anti-ship defenses. Another Vietnam era feature that makes New Jersey unique among all battleships is that Captain J. Edward Snyder installed a pair of swimming pools on board. One of them right here by the door to his cabin. This was a 40 millimeter gun tub and you might still be able to see the outline of it here on the deck or the framing of it where it was left over there. During the Vietnam War, to save money, they removed the antiquated weapons, but didn't remove the gun tub. Captain Snyder repurposed it as a swimming pool, but by the 1980s, they cut most of the tub away to the condition you see it now, and decked it over with uh, teak wood. The museum has torn up that wood to show you the deck, and if you tune back in for a later video this summer, you'll see where we reinstall a swimming pool here. High capacity shells like this one are the reason the battleship New Jersey was brought back for the Vietnam War. The gunfire support she was able to provide our troops ashore saved countless numbers of them. Be sure to come back on board on April 6th, Saturday, for our Vietnam Living History Day where we're going to interview some of the troops who were ashore who were saved by the vessel and some of the sailors on this vessel uh, who manned her during the war. Remember to like, share, and subscribe our videos, and check back in every Friday for new content.